Welcome into the first episode of Foul Mouth Fantasy Football. I am Scott. Um, you might recognize us if you follow Jim and 10 Sports. You probably recognize all, all four of us from uh, the two guys in a mic pro- podcast. Um, so we are now jumping into fantasy football. I know we're a little, little late. Uh, scheduling's been rough. Uh, we've been drafting in a shit ton of leagues, so it's been hard to find time. But now that we're pretty much all done with uh, drafting, uh, basically what this podcast is going to be about is going to kind of follow our year of fantasy football. Um, is, we're going to talk about uh, our dynasty leagues that we're in, um, the some survival leagues that we're in. We're also doing a vampire league. Uh, we don't do a regular redraft league. That's kind of, I don't know. I feel like uh, it's plain. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's plain. To, it's just a little bit too repetitive for me. I like to change things up. So uh, today we're going to jump into what was our favorite league that we started last year. Uh, we call it the OG Survival League because we do have two of these leagues. Uh, you can kind of one, call one like the minor league, and then this one is like more like all the people from last year. Um, so. If you're unfamiliar with a way the Survivor League uh, works, the rules are basically uh, the way we do it. There's different ways you can do it, but the way we do it is it's eight people. Uh, you do not play an individual opponent. You don't have like a normal schedule. You basically, it goes by total points. Whoever is the lowest point score total for the week, <clears throat> what's going to end up happening is basically you get like a check mark. Okay, so if you finish in last place two times out of the year, your team is removed from the league, and you can go fucking kick rocks for all we care. Go concentrate on your other leagues because you're out. Um, so what ends up happening is once your team is eliminated, all your players get dumped into the free agent pool. Now, this is where things get a little bit interesting. We have limited moves, so we can only do uh, – what is it, Matt? You changed it to 19, Nin- right? 19. Yeah, last year was 21. This year is 19. Yeah, so you only have 19 total roster moves for the entire year. There's also no IR slots. No, no trades. On, yeah, you can't hold on to any any hurt players unless they're going to take up space on your bench. Uh, it is a total of 17 people on your roster. I think it's 10 starting, right, Matt? Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's also a super flex league. Um, last year I won this. I'm probably going to end up winning again after you see my team. It's all good. These guys. Mm. Okay. Hey, Scott, oh. do me, Scott, Scott, do me a favor. No, no. Take no. your hand. Take your hand. <clears throat> and just fucking pat yourself on the back. Oh, oh I am. Sucker. Oh, oh, plenty. <laughs> I'm fucking funny patting myself on the back. So last year was the first year we did this. So I am the OG champion. I take that away. Um, I'm basically, in, I have a strategy. I'll like talk about said. it if i end up winning again if it works two times in a row we're seeing someone picks up on it i will talk about that then yeah and and when teams get dropped to the waivers we don't have a um, traditional waiver wire system we have a fab which is a free agent auction free agent acquisition budget um you got to bid for the players so it's like a blind auction um you win that player that gets dropped Mm and they're on your team for the rest of the year if you want them still yeah everybody knows mike spent his entire fab Hey, Matt, I after, after, last year. after you, after you did, Tony. <laughs> after you did, hey, Matt, I, I called you out. Hey, right? Josh Allen well, fucked both of us last year. Yeah, he did. Hey, thanks for letting me finish the explanation, Matt. I, I appreciate that. Well, you're already moving on, so I, I don't know if you're you're about to talk teams. <laughs> oh no, I wasn't done yet. I wasn't. I was just oh. wanting everyone to know that don't listen to anything that you three say. Like I'm the champion. If you want to know how to win this particular <laughs> league, this the, you, you want to listen to my advice. You guys are just kind of here for show. I'm here to talk about championship <laughs> fucking fantasy football. We're in the bed after the year. Yeah. So anyways, anyways, uh, done with that. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to break down the draft that we had. Uh, each one of us are going to talk about the team that we drafted, uh, maybe particular reasons for drafting, maybe our favorite pick, our least favorite pick. We reached for someone. I know there was at least one guy I reached heavily for. I wanted to pair him with the quarterback. So you guys uh, also, by the way, if you see – guys eating pizza so what it is is that we have a four-man best ball uh we've been doing this every i don't know what is this like the sixth seventh year we've been doing it since yeah. best ball started since best ball became a thing um yeah before we started best ball um we did a four-man full draft and you know that yeah. was kind of that was good Long. it was like a redraft but best ball has taken over the mainstream media you know that's that's the new hotness with some best ball yeah so we do a best ball uh loser 
not only loses their money, but has to buy the other three pizzas. And then when we do the draft, we eat the we eat the pizza. But um, thanks, Matt. You know, yeah, Matt fucked it up. Oh, you fuck, Matt fucked it all up last night. So yeah, they're eating. You know pizza. proof. They're eating pizza right now. Um, hey, Matt, our our Mike, do you have any any stats you want to share about the uh, about yeah. the uh, best ball before we get started? I do. <laughs> what? Oh, dude! I wasn't looking. Go no. look at your phone. Oh, no. You don't need to look. Look at your phone. Oh my gosh! <laughs> wow! I I swear, my whole team is hurt. What is this? All right. So let me. Matt oh wow! Matt you guys serious? Yeah. Thanks for the free pizza, Matt. Wow! Go. You guys are assholes, dude. You guys better send me my fucking ten dollars back. <laughs> <laughs> so, who was it? What's laughing at is we convinced Matt he took last place last year, and he paid us all out for pizza. Wow. Uh, couldn't. I, we we don't 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 talk about how I don't I don't want to get fucking banned or whatever. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no. Uh, you couldn't my, verify. That's all we're saying. Yeah, Mike Mike took last place, so Fuck Mike did pizza. And I Thanks for the pizza, Mike. Hey, I didn't pay. Matt paid. Oh, I'm getting my money back. Watch. <laughs> I'm getting my fucking money back. <laughs> All right, you guys ready to jump in this thing or what? Let's go. All right, let's go. Bro. Damn, Mike, you suck. Ah, here we so go. We're start, we're start. So we're going to go ahead and start with my team. I ended up getting the yeah. pick in the draft, which I, I actually don't really like the number one overall pick. I would prefer... To be somewhere around like four or five, especially with the eight man draft, the it, I think the four and five spot like work out great. Um, so I ended up, I, I had a tough time between uh, Jefferson and McCaffrey. Um, I took McCaffrey only because if he stays healthy, I think he is going to be a league winner. I mean, the, the guy has a chance to have two thousand all purpose yards all day of the week. Um, but I, I was. Ah man, I was this close to still taking Justin Jefferson. I think Jefferson's gonna be unreal again this year. He's he's improved every year. So uh ended up going with McCaffrey now. This is a, I don't know if I mentioned this is a super flex. So don't be alarmed that when you see Fields there um with my second pick. Uh quarterbacks already I wanna say didn't quarterbacks start flying off the board. Yeah, Mahomes went number five. Yeah, I'll I'll talk about that when I get to my team, but I think Yeah, so so I wanted to go with a Russian quarterback. I wanted at least one of them. Um, I, I went ahead and went with Fields. Um, now, if you see, I drafted DJ Moore in the sixth round. Um, in an eight-man, that's a little bit soon. That ended up being the 48th pick. The reason I did that is I really like to pair my wide receivers with my quarterbacks. It's something that I do, or at least a tight end. But I think DJ, if you watch, if anyone was watching, obviously, preseason you saw the connection between DJ Moore and Fields. It's there. Even with all the shitty quarterback play that uh, Moore has had, he's still over, he's been over 1,000 yards each year. They made it a point in the preseason to feed him the football. I, I think he has a legitimate chance to have over 100 receptions, 1,200 yards, about eight or nine touchdowns. I do think it can happen. Uh, Chicago's defense is not that great. Plenty of opportunities to score. I, I think Phil's and DJ, DJ Moore is a great pairing. Now, I took Hawkinson in the seventh round because at the time, Kirk Cousins was still available. I was hoping to get Kirk Cousins as my second quarterback. He ended up getting taken mm -hmm. the round as it came back to me. He ended up getting taken. So I already had St. Brown. Golf was available. Went with the next best thing. So I have Golf and, uh, and St. Brown. I have Fields and I have DJ Moore. I think it. I think I set myself up great. Uh, one pick. Now the uh, let me let me let me go back. The thing about this league is because of the limited roster moves, the draft means a lot more. It's kind of like a best ball. The draft means a lot because you can't just be picking up guys off a of waiver wire week in and week out. Basically, until someone's team's dropped, you really shouldn't use a roster spot. Or at least a, a a move, I should say. Transaction. Um, yeah, so it's very important that you draft good. And you, you draft in backups because injuries are going to happen. 
I took a stab with, and these guys will know, I have been talking about Jalen Warren since the beginning of last season. I have been all over. I think Jalen Warren has a chance to take over Pittsburgh's uh, uh, running back, uh, starting running back position. I took a stab at him late. If that ends up happening, I'm golden as far as running backs. I won't have to waste any roster moves. I don't think as far as because I have Mixon, I have uh, McCaffrey, I have Pacheco, who I think is going to be all right. Addison's another starting running back. And if Jalen Warren ends up taking that, I think I'm going to I'm going to be looking good. Um, my wide receivers here, uh, I got St. Brown, Deontay Smith, uh, DJ Moore, who we already talked about. Deontay Johnson didn't score a touchdown last year. I don't see that happening again. I got him in the ninth round. I think he I think he's going to do okay. He is on my bench. Drake London has a chance to be good. Um, now, the report came out with Sky Moore. Sky Moore is supposed to be on the field for every play. That's what they want out of Sky Moore over there in Kansas City. There's no really clear cut number one. I took a stab at him, hoping, just hoping that maybe he'll be, maybe, maybe he can pull, you know, 70 receptions. He'll be a good well, guy. So, Scott, I, I, I'll, I'll jump in here to say something about this guy more because I remember this vividly. I was pretty upset because like, oh, you, you picked him up right before I did. I was He was my next pick. And I mean, I, I picked Patrick Mahomes. I wanted to pair Sky Moore with him. I Cardenas Tony's going to get hurt. I mean, that's just, he's a demo. That's a demo. And then um, I don't know if MBS can stand the like playing like that long. I don't know. He's just not, I don't like MBS. He's just a deep threat. Yeah, he's just a deep threat. And but Travis Kelsey's there. So I think Sky Moore can play a lot like in that mid-range area, I think that's where he's going to excel. Yeah, no. I, and, if, and, if, and if Jones holds out, that offense will be able to even more. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know when Jones is going to come back, but I don't give a shit because that just means Kansas City is going to get scored on and they're Patrick Mahomes. If, if, if Chris Jones doesn't come back for like six weeks, all Kansas City is going to be doing is throwing the ball. Like all damn game because I, I don't know what they're that defensive line. I don't know how it's going to get pressure on anyone. Um, I, I actually I think Detroit Kansas City on Thursday uh, uh, today's Monday. Just so everyone knows the uh, it's Labor Day, um, but I think that Kansas City Detroit game that 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 could be like a forty eight to forty two game. That 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 has the writing of a fantasy football gym. You're going on the over? I think the over under is a uh, fifty two. Oh, I would I would put actually I might actually just go put a bet on that. If if the right if, uh if it's fifty two or fifty one. There's no way it's that low. I think it was. Unless it went up to like fifty seven. Fifty four and a half. So oh, it dude, went up. the overall day. I Kansas would City surprised. Kansas City and Kansas City's favored by six and a half. Fuck, I, I should have took that fifty one last week. Yeah. By themselves, to be honest. I mean, yeah. I mean, Detroit made some changes in the secondary. They could be better, but they still don't have a very good, you know, yeah. front. So even if Jones comes back this week, he can't. I don't think he can play, right? Yeah, he could play. He could. Yeah, he he could he show back tomorrow because he's becomes, not in shape. Oh yeah, he comes Depends back tomorrow. On his yeah, if he comes back tomorrow. I don't think they'd play him a lot. I, 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 think, they would, I think they would withhold him. While we're on it, um, I just saw up there earlier. They're nine and a half million dollars away annually. Oh, that's a lot. Annually? Yeah, I got I got the update earlier. I don't oh, know if you guys saw that. That's huge. Is Chris Jones asking for like forty million. He's that's worth it. He was the best graded out defensive player on the defensive line last year. Here's my question. Is he waiting to see Bosa's contract? It could no, be. they're different different positions. But, but still he does play. Yeah. yeah. He's looking at that Donald contract, I think, once more. Yeah. Well, Bosa's yeah. contract is supposed to be higher than Donald's. Well, at what point does it stop, but, guys? He can't be paying people a hundred million dollars a year. Yeah, like, in, like, in forty or fifty years, when we're fucking old as fuck, we're gonna be sitting here talking about players. We're trying to be the highest paid and get a hundred year annually. What that's the, what the fuck. Yeah, that's just a whole other topic. That was we'll yep. get a fucking yeah. We'll get yeah. sidetracked right now. That was a short podcast. Anyways, yeah. uh, one guy I did take who I do have my um, as a sleeper. I took Romeo Dobbs as my last pick. Uh. The, the word out of camp is that Jordan Love it's, has a more of a connection with Dobbs than with Christian Watson. Uh, Christian Watson was Aaron Rodgers, you know, Aaron Rodgers' baby. Number one, yeah. 
Aaron Rodgers is no longer there, and people are drafting Watson as if as if it's the same quarterback. It's not the same quarterback situation. You should somewhat listen to what the what the uh, the beat writers are saying, um, and they're all saying he looks for Romeo Dobbs. So, well, Romeo Dobbs is already on question for Week One, right? He's yeah, there. he is. He is. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if he's going to end up playing. I don't know, but he's on my bench. It doesn't matter. I'm I'm starting St. Brown, Deontay Smith, DJ Moore. Those, those are my starting guys. Um, in fact, here let me go. Uh, let me go. Yeah, I was over. just going to say, do you have do you have your your lineup done right now? Yeah, here I can go over who I'm starting. You want me to go look at it, Scott? If you have it done, yeah, I, can pull, it I, I can have to pull it up. So you're, project, I, you're projected for one sixty nine point eight four. Yeah, yeah, here, look, so, I'll, I'll go look at it. I can look at the league, and I can click on your name. It's probably faster than you talking about it so that, that people can get a look for it, Mr. Con- Consistent. So here's who you're starting. Yeah, so Justin Fields, Derek Goff. Uh, I also drafted Derek Carr. I know uh, Tony uh, Tony was a little jealous. He said Adam, uh, he had him cued that round. I wanted him round one, but fuck. <laughs> uh, I think with the Saints schedule, he's going to have some soft uh, – some soft games, and I think, um, you know, maybe when, when Goff and Fields have a – well, I don't think I would actually bench Fields, but uh, I, I wouldn't mind putting in Carr for Goff if, if the play was correct. Um, but I am running with Fields and Goff. Wide receivers are St. Brown, Devontae Smith, DJ Moore. Running backs are McCaffrey and Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon has been kind of dropping in, in drafts, by the way, mm-hmm. which I don't really know. I got him in the fifth round, which – Ended up being pick 33, um, but he, he should be going in the first two rounds. He doesn't have any competition for carries. Um, TJ Hawkinson, he just signed that massive contract. Uh, Deontay Johnson, um, Isaiah Pacheco, and obviously I already said golf. But, so that's what I'm rolling with on mine. My question to you, Scott, it, on, on TJ Hawkinson, because we did this draft before the news came out that he got the extension, right? Um, yeah. Are you worried that his play is going to get less now that he has that big contract? No. No. I mean, that's statistically what you see. They get the big contract and their play kind of gets like – go, they play less than like 25% of what they – their production is about 25% less. Yeah. They're, they're if I, yeah. The, the one thing is you guys got to remember Minnesota's run game last year was not very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, their yeah. team was not very good. They're, they're not going to have any of these fourth-quarter blowouts where – you know, Hawkinson's going to disappear in the fourth quarter or anything like that. Um, I, I think Hawkinson is – is he's going to probably be – well, he's going to be a top five time, yeah. opinion. Yeah. And and if I, and I got him in the seventh round. It, it was good value at that time. Now, the one thing I didn't do is I didn't draft a backup tight end. So, I need him to stay healthy. Here we go. Well, but, the, but the good thing for that, though, is his buy is not until week 13. Yeah, that's why he did that because I can wait for a team to get dropped, and I can hopefully get a better tight end situation at, at some point during the year. Um, I, I just, well, you won't be able to take Kelsey. Kelsey's also got a week thirteen by. I mean, I could. Oh no, actually, he doesn't. I'm sorry, Kelsey does not have a thirteen by. No. Ten. I was looking uh, at thirteen. I was looking at thirteen right there. That was his pick. I'm yeah. looking right now. I like your team, Scott. I just think the Jared Goff pick um, at pick 64 was just a tad too early. You could have gotten a couple better players. Like maybe, I don't know. I don't even know if Mike Evans was available there at that time. But mm-hmm. what quarterbacks were still available at that point? And it was going to be mean, another 16 picks before he had another pick. Yeah, yeah. you got to think You got to think at that time the elite quarterbacks are gone. I mean, I would still be happy with like a Kirk Cousins. I'm pretty sure he went a little later or like Kenny Pickett um, later on. I mean, yeah. The Jared Goff. No, you're you're 164. Right? I'll tell you right now. Uh, quarterbacks that went after him: Anthony Richardson, um, are you gonna stop or are you gonna get going? I'm looking. <laughs> I took Pickett and Kenny Pickett, and then Scott yeah. took Carr. Yeah. So, yeah, Brock I mean, Purdy, Sam I, I want to say at the time it was already starting. And to be Bryce Young. Big. So if I didn't take it was it was Slim Pickens already. That's why I'm saying who was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, I think normally it would be a reach, but yeah, like what Mike said at the time, there was no one else available. And on top of that, I think pairing golf with with <clears throat> down is is going to be huge uh, for yeah. some 
multiple points. So the fact that I managed to do that with both my quarterbacks, I'm I'm pretty happy. Yeah. But uh, you guys got any questions for me as far as anything on my team? You guys want to talk any shit on it? No, that was just the only the only like issue I had. I probably would have waited another round or two for for golf. Even if I couldn't get golf, I would have been fine with like uh, I'm high on Sam Hill. And that with Airbnb enemy there from Kansas City, I think he's gonna do phenomenal with those weapons he has. Yeah, the only problem I have with that, Matt, and I, I know I expressed that to you was the the toe injury with McLaurin, him losing oh, yeah, yeah. big I mean, weapon. Um if, if McLaurin's not on the field. Yeah. It, it I think of, Johan Dotson is gonna that is a great pick, man. We did that draft last night on um for our four man, and I don't know who took Dotson, but somebody took him. Yeah, totally Dotson did. have a massive year. He's going to have a massive year. So, one uh, one thing that's going to be interesting to see how it plays out is you do have two teams that you have a receiver and a running back from the same team. I'm not worried about that. Kansas City, you have Pacheco and Sky Moore. And then Minnesota, you have Madison and oh, – I'm sorry, I said receiver, but you have Madison and Hawkinson. I don't but, think there's a scenario where you play both of them every week. Or yeah, there's play. not a scenario right yeah. now as far as the way that goes. They're kind of – they're like Madison is more if like I get if like one of my running backs get injured and I'm forced to start him, you know what I mean? But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I would it would be between him and Pacheco. It would just basically go down to matchup from there, and, and I think I'll be okay because one like, one of the things that I'm surprised about is that you took Justin Fields over Lamar Jackson. So I think they're going to be kind of even now. The I, one thing I, the one thing I will say about Lamar Jackson. Yeah, no one's talking about this is he got a new offensive coordinator who likes to go up tempo and likes to throw the ball. The problem I have with that is Lamar Jackson isn't like really the best, most accurate mm -hmm. thrower. And if they rely more on Lamar Jackson's arm than his feet is going to really hurt his fantasy value. So the way I look at it, I'm like, okay, well, Fields has a great arm. He He's not bad at throwing and he can run. I just felt like right now, Fields, not necessarily the safer bet, but I feel like there's a higher ceiling when it comes a higher, to higher upside. Yep. Mm -hmm. With Fields than there is with Lamar Jackson. That, I, that was, I, and yeah. I, I understand that. I just feel like I would have. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've noticed this across the board that Justin Fields is going early, not just in super flex leagues, but just in leagues in general. And I feel like there's a lot of hope there <laughs> that just fields it, pans it, out it could totally backfire on me and fields could just regress or just not get any better and it, it could backfire mm -hmm. on me but luckily with this i can always pluck a quarterback for someone else's team if if i survive yeah but it's, again i am the champion I you're have not to, going to so i'm gonna fucking survive so anyways i think enough with my team um matt you had the second overall pick i like to jump into mm -hmm. you because i know i fucked you a couple times uh just the way you like it yeah I'm it was talking, <laughs> i'm not talking about the draft i'm talking about outside of the draft but anyways let's go ahead and do it. <laughs> the only one that um I, I bring up the sky more the sky more is uh i was gonna take sky more i took antonio gibson um scott had the back-to-back um, on the way back up, and he took Sky Moore in between that, and I was like, ah, I should have just went Sky Moore, and then Gibson. Yeah, you could have taken Sky Moore instead of Pickett. No, I needed a quarterback at that point. No, not in a super flex. Uh, I, I'd no. say the yeah. takes takes yeah. uh, takes over on that. Yeah. Well, no, so, what I'm saying is is Matt could have taken Pickett at 111. Moore went the next pick, and then Matt would have had pick again 114. Yeah, but yeah, he could have. And that's the thing. Sometimes you think like. Mm -hmm. It, it, that's the crazy thing about fantasy football is sometimes you think you're the only guy thinking yeah. about a player, and sure enough, they go that round, and you're like, "Fuck, I should have just not yeah. taken a chance." Yeah. If you like a guy, you got it. You have to take him, even if it's a reach. Yeah, yeah. That, that that's that's the one thing about drafting is if you like your guy and you want your guy, take your guy. You know, I I I I did it with DJ yeah. Moore. I took DJ mm -hmm. Moore. I there's a there was quite a few guys. Left over DJ Moore, but I was just I really wanted DJ Moore to pair with Fields. I probably took him probably around maybe even two rounds too early. Um, I don't remember exactly what wide receivers were available at that time, but he was like sixth or seventh on the list of wide receivers left, and there were still some running backs to be taken. So he could have very much fell to me the following round. But again, if you like your guy, 
my my suggestion is mm -hmm. you take oh, your guy. Right. Just don't yeah, fuck yeah. around. I, I'm a big proponent of going with your gut. Like my gut yeah. has always, I've always been right with my gut, even though I've lost many times because I did not go with my gut. And that's what proves to me that you should have just go with yeah. your gut. Well, I, think right there, been, I, was, I think I think we've all been with Matt's guts. <laughs> right, right there. I was just taking the ADP gamble. Sky Moore is a lot further down, so I was like, you know what? Let me. I picked two uh, two picks out there, Scott, and I was like, I don't think so. And then you know, I lost the bed. So I mean, sometimes it happens. Um, it does. Yep. Yeah. No, you're right. Uh, let me start. Uh, Justin Jefferson. I mean, it, right now he's going between the one and two pick. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a lot more Jefferson than McCaffrey. I'm seeing McCaffrey go more at two overall, to be honest with you, than I. Um, do to see Justin Jefferson. So, you know, I was happy to start off my team with receiver. And this year, out of all years, I've been that guy to be heavy running back, to be smash running back, you know, first round, second round. But if I can get, like the like I was telling Scott earlier, um, NFL's changing, man. The the, the yeah. Belka running backs are no longer there. I mean, if you can't get the Austin Eckler of the world, the McCaffreys, um, I mean, I don't even know who else I'm missing. I mean, I can't even throw Josh Jacobs in that because he only did a one-year thing. So it's like... Yep. I, I just prefer um, – I'm, I'm going to share some secrets. I just prefer to take a wide receiver early, whether it's best ball, because um, I like these running backs in rounds four. Let me write that down. <laughs> the rounds, rounds four through seven are all these running backs that you can get that are starters. Like you can get a Aaron Jones, Cam Akers, um, I don't know, a David Montgomery. Um, you can get Isaiah Pacheco, you know. I mean, yeah. Jonathan Taylor. I mean, jo uh, yeah, Jonathan Taylor too, but <laughs> – <laughs> but there's there's running backs like Brees Hall, Javante's in the eighth round, and it's just you can get these running backs that can be, yeah. you know, potential RB ones. I mean, they're not going to be like you know like top end yeah. running backs, but they can be the mid RB two to help your team. And I I've gone to figure out like if you have those elite wide receivers to stack your team, you're going to be just fine. I mean, and that's, that's why I, I think, Jefferson. I think I'll talk about it here just because I'm glad Matt mentioned it. That like we're living in a world now where running back is being devalued or it's being spread spread thinner than it has been. It's hard to say that guy's going to be the bell cow. You know, there's very few yeah. of them, and we'll talk about it when we get to my team. And for me, it's leading to fantasy. Like you know, I, so I took Je Jefferson one, and I know it's a super flex, and I was like, you know what, let me let me wait. Um, I usually take my quarterbacks in the first uh, two picks, mm -hmm. so I, you know, I just mix it up, spice it up this draft. I took Diggs, you know, to solidify my two top receivers. Um, I still like him and um. Josh Allen there in Buffalo. Um, he's still the number one, hopefully, for <laughs> this year, and he doesn't cause too much of a commotion over there in, in Buffalo. Yeah. Uh, I went with Lamar. Uh, I, have, I had not had him in any leagues. That's why I went with him. Um, I think he has a uh, high floor. I mean, his floor is not low. He just has a high floor, you know, so he's going to give me that consistent rushing attack. I mean, his, his rushing yards might dwindle back well, a little I mean, bit, but think I think if he can complete the pass yards. Get cut yeah. by fifty percent. It's he's still, still going to have four four hundred yards <laughs> rushing, five hundred yards rushing. So it's not a, and then, you know if the if the touchdowns tick, you know passing touchdowns tick to like eight more, seven more. You know I'll, I'll take that. It, it is what it is. He's still going to get his. Yeah, it's going to so, offset each other, each. Other. Matt, I want uh, yeah. just a couple of things real quick. Uh, Stefan Diggs is someone I I ended up fading this year. I didn't draft him in any league. I'm actually in. The reason being is I had him last year. Um, it was the only redraft league I did last year, right? I, I mm -hmm. do it with my oldest stepson. Dude, he he faded he's hitter, when he's the hitter. weather. Oh, when the weather changed, he faded. Mm -hmm. There were some big snow games in yeah. Buffalo, and he he could not get any points. It wasn't on him. It was just the yeah. weather. Did. So I I kind of went away from that this year. I I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not I'm not mm -hmm. gonna do. I, I, yeah. like a, well, work. that's that's what I was going to say. He was kind of hit and miss. And from somebody that mm -hmm. you're drafting that early, you want somebody that's going to give you more consistent production on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm, and your 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 starting roster is not done, correct? That's not what you're rolling with, right? What do you mean? If um, well, when we show your starting roster, I, I got a question about it, but okay. No, no, no. Uh, that's yeah. So that was my third round pick, uh, Jalen Waddle. Like I said, you know, if the digs, the digs production, you know, ticks back in in November, December, you know, I have wide receivers to cover. I have Waddle there. I mean, with Tua, if he can stay healthy, um, you know how the offense runs over there in Miami. Calvin Ridley. I mean, if this guy can come back for suspension um, this year and reestablish himself as a top tier wide receiver, which he was back in was it 2019, 2020? 
Um, if, have you seen the reports come out of camp? He's that is phenomenal. Right. He's always been a great route runner. That yeah, guy's always been him when I wanted him. But he looks faster. He yeah. looks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Usually, as wide receivers, when you get, you know, you take a year off or two, whether it's because of trouble or injury, they look slower. But his was an injury. I mean, you, you figured he'd lose a step. He's, what is he, 29? Um, but he's, st- he's still running like he's 27. Well, I think, and I think this is something that we don't know. That's why he's doing that. I think it's because he needs money, right? Yeah. He's been out of the league for so long. He doesn't have that that contract that's massive that's going to pay him a fuck ton of money. Does he need money for gambling? And, well, 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 hold on. He's trying to get paid. <laughs> he's, trying to, he's trying to get paid, but at the same time, like, I don't know how his contract is structured, but I don't even know if he got paid for the year that he wasn't playing by Jacksonville. Like, they may have back-ended mm-hmm. his contract because, like, you're not playing that year. We're not going to pay you. So he has yeah. no cash in hand until he actually plays. So he mm-hmm. might need to keep his conditioning on point. Yeah. Let me uh, let me get to this. I'm going to run through it real quick. Geno Smith, I usually don't reach for my second quarterback, but um, I think as far as, like, Geno, I, I think in Seattle, his three elite receivers that he has – and yeah, I'm calling Jason elite. He hasn't played it down in the league in the league yet, but his route run is elite. Like Jalen Waddle, like Calvin Ridley, well, like these upper I echelon think the wide receivers. He's on runs. him already. He's he's expected to be elite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, mean, I know the wrist injury he had a fractured wrist or whatever, but he's back at practice. He's catching balls. I mean, he has a he has his rip his wrist wrapped. I mean, he's still running routes and in condition, so I'm not really too worried about him. And Geno, with that those three weapons he has, he's going to be you know maybe a Borderline lower end or a QB one, high end QB two. So that's why I went there. This is where the draft went sour, and <laughs> and Tony and Mike were. I was in the lobby with them. We're nah, he fucking did track. this consciously, guys. Consciously. And I was like, I didn't think this guy was gonna get back to me. And I had Keenan Allen, and 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 what round was it? Seventh, eighth. He was uh, falling. Seven, eight, uh, like, I'm gonna seven, yeah, seven, seven, round. Seven, seven. So I was like, I'm gonna solidify these wide receivers, and Keenan Allen's gonna be my what fifth wide receiver. I was like, boom, hit it. And I don't know what the fuck happened. I accidentally drafted Jonathan Taylor. I stared at my screen. It said drafted. And yeah, I, it was it was bad. I hit my I hit my fucking desk. I was pissed. And I know he was like, Can I pause the draft? Hey, I want it. Hey, I don't want that pick. I don't want he that. He had to draft Jonathan Taylor. He hit his desk like fuck yeah, I got my guy. Yeah. <laughs> and then so, yeah. So next round, I, I go with Chris Godwin. Um I I don't like the offense in Tampa, but I think a lot of people forget about this uh, Baker Mayfield uh, when he was with the Browns. Um, Jarvis Landry, Jarvis Landry had a phenomenal season in the slot with uh, Baker Mayfield. I think he had over like 100 receptions that year. So maybe Mike Evans suffers a little bit. I think Mike Evans can still do his thing, but I think Chris Godwin in the slot there uh, is going to do really good. As far as it's, this is a full PPR league, that's why I went that route. So I had to make up for that Jonathan Taylor pick. Aaron Jones fell to me. And this round, and I know all the rumors with JT going there or whatever, you know, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. So, I mean, I couldn't pass on a potential RB1 if JT doesn't go to Green Bay. Cam Maker, same thing. He's going to get volume in that offense. Sean McVay, they're going to be down a lot. He's really the only running back there that with the talent as far as, like, pass catching and pass blocking. So he's going to get all the touches there. Montgomery, same thing. I mean, that offense runs two running backs in uh, Detroit. Jameer Gibbs, we all know, is going to be the pass catcher, but David Montgomery is a capable pass catcher. We all know that. He has a he's pass catching chops. Used to be a wide receiver in college, so and he's gonna be the goal line back. So I, I need a touchdown. So Jason, I touched on him. I think he's phenomenal elite route runner. Um, as long as he stays healthy and is there, I, I don't need him to be there week one. As long as he's fully healthy by week two, hopefully he's a high end wide receiver two or so. Uh, Antonio Gibson, I'm high on this guy. I know he's been in the league for five years, but I think with Eric the enemy there, um, he can unlock him. Uh, a lot of the offensive coordinators that went through uh, Washington, I don't think they knew how to use him. Um, there was times we'd get it a couple years ago. He's going to be the he's going to be the lead dog. He's going to get all the touches. He's our Christian McCaffrey, and we never saw it. I don't think they know how to use him. So I think this year with the enemy, he's going to he has something up his sleeve to hopefully get him involved more in the offense. Well, Kenny Pickett, something, something to piggyback on that. I know you're high on Sam Howell as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So I'm, I'm really on Sam. With, Howell. Uh, I'm sure with your logic too, you're considering Sam Howell is going to be able to open up that playbook and that offense even more and spread the field versus before, which will open up that for Gibson. He's more of the mobile quarterback. Like, he can get out the pocket. He can move. um, He can run. So, you know, if he gets out the pocket, sees Antonio Gibson in the flat, dump it off to him, hopefully get some some first downs. We'll see. I mean, I could be wrong. Um, Kenny Pickett. um, I'm really high on Kenny Pickett. I've seen him in the preseason. Looks good. I know it's preseason. 
But the year one from year two jump as far as fantasy quarterbacks for quarterbacks and the year two, it's, it's phenomenal. Hopefully he can take that next step and he looks great so far. Hopefully he could translate that into, into the season. And here I went Burks. I needed wide receivers. I felt like I needed pounded receivers, uh, just to pound receivers in this draft to uh, help me out. Um, since I had the JSN injury, you know, and then I just needed to recoup for that. <laughs> that Keenan Allen draft pick that never was. So I went that. I know he has a hurt LCL, but right now he's on track for week one. Um, yeah, you said Jonathan Taylor wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. Uh, Renfro. <laughs> um, I don't know what's going on in Vegas. I know Renfro is the, the slot guy. Um, hopefully Jimmy G can develop a chemistry with him and get him going that offense. We'll see about that. Yep. And that's some time for that chemistry to not mean shit. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I... I, I the way I see it, I, I told CP. I've been telling I've been telling people, Raider fans, I, I don't see Adams making it past the trade deadline. If he does, he's gone in the offseason. If he magically gets past the trade deadline, um, and if, you're, if you're I'm the Raiders, the I try to capitalize um, before the trade line, trade deadline, deadline to get as mm -hmm. much capital as I can. Because if you wait till the end of the season, yeah, you're not going to get as much capital for him at the end of the season. I, yeah, because teams yeah, that's, by week that's seven, a Raider fan. Teams by week seven are trying to make that playoff run. You know, the elite teams. Like, if you can get a Buffalo to give you a first round or something, you know, and get – if Especially he needs to go to the Buffalo Jets or are doing or the real Jets, well, yeah. I think they mm -hmm. might push, give first yeah. for the next 25 and years. <laughs> you guys see <laughs> you guys see Tyler Higby down here. So, during the draft, we all know the whole offseason um, debacle or the issue with Cooper Cup. Uh, I don't think he's going to be healthy for the first multiple weeks, like two or three weeks of the season. That hamstring could linger. He could come back and just re-pull it again. Um, so I went Higby here. So besides Van Jefferson and and oh, I, who else is there? Tutu Atwell and a couple of rookie wide receivers. I think Higby can get funneled plenty of targets in that yeah. offense. And only went one tight end too as well. Um, I figured Higby can get me by. Hopefully he stays healthy. And by week, whatever it is, I can pick up a, an elite tight end to help me out for the stretch run in this league. So that's why I went Higby. The only thing I have to say about your team, Matt, I mean, it's good. I'd be also about the by week 10. Yeah, I, I think that the, the Jonathan Taylor pick really fucked you hard. If, um, if that yeah. was Keenan Allen, this team would be phenomenal. I would really well, like that. You, you recovered from it and, and still have a solid team. Yeah, you recovered and from Jonathan, it. And, and if Jonathan Taylor comes back after it week works. four. I agree. It works. It's not you're, bad. You're yeah. even better off. I just yeah. feel like you're you're thin at running backs. You only have the four yeah. running backs, and so well in this league you only I'm start two forward. running backs. That's that's why that's why I say like if I can't get my Eckler, if I if I can't get Nick Chubb or even Derrick Henry, I think this is Derrick Henry last year as far as being a three running, running backs. Back. Yeah, you can start up to three running backs, but I'd well, rather put that. You, start, you technically could start four if you put one in super yeah. flex, but you're not. But going if you to don't have if right. you don't have those two three to lead guys, I figured. A wide receiver and a flex. I, I, what, is, what is the whole? The whole stat was, a reception yields you two and a half more times uh, than a rush does. Whether it's a running back or a wide receiver catching yeah. the ball, more points. So I figured I, I could pound wide receiver and go wide receiver in my flexes. So that's that's the way I went, and I went based off if I can give me two two good running backs to start in my running back slot, I'll be fine. Like Aaron Jones, or Cam Akers, I'm fine with that, or David Montgomery. Yeah, Just I hopefully was these wide receivers can carry me. I, w I will say this. It is going to be one or two things. Your running backs are either going to be the downfall of you getting eliminated or, or mm -hmm. two, you're going to survive long enough to where you can pluck a couple running backs off of some eliminated teams. And yeah. that's when your team's going to be – it's going to be dangerous. If you can get past – if you go look at CP's team and what running backs he has. <laughs> you can do an analysis on CP. Well, see, that's what I that's what I looked last year. I was looking for positions this year. If if I can, like Scott said, if I can survive, I I don't have to really look for wide receivers if they stay healthy. I can just pound running back and the free agent yeah. wire for teams that are, are eliminated. I like that. Yeah, I, I no, I, I like the strategy. Um, I will say I don't know if I'm a fan of starting two. Ram players. Ram that's players. Why. Yeah. If this is your starting running, I would start. Uh, with without Chris Jones there in Kansas City playing on Thursday, I would start Montgomery. Oh, I'm going to start Montgomery. I haven't I haven't did my lineup in this league. Okay. Is my lineup done? Check it out, Tony. Go if you can. If you can get to my lineup, I want to see it. What I have yeah. so far. I don't think Montgomery's starting. No, he's he's not. You have Acres in there. That's why I was kind of like. Oh yeah, I, I do have Acres. Yeah. Start 
two Rams. <laughs> and Seattle's going to have a good defense. I I, I think Higby yeah. could be a little slow on that game. He may not get Excuse the me. point you're expecting. But um, I, I still I, – obviously, Cooper Cup has some health issues going yeah. on. He's going to be hurt. If he's going to be constantly off the field again this year, mm-hmm. I like the Higby pick. He, That's why with all, we all know as far as tight ends, if you if you don't get the Darren Waller, if you don't get Mark Andrews, Travis Kelsey, um, who else am I missing? Maybe even TJ Hawkins will throw him in there and, and um, Dallas Goddard. If those I, like those tight ends were gone, and I was like, you know what? There's no reason to, to reach for a tight end. All these other tight ends you can just throw in a fucking in a barrel, and it's just Russian roulette. It's luck. So I figured in a PPR, hey, B can get me if he can get me four to five catches for like forty yards. I'll take that thirty yards. That's seven points. I'll take that. I'll take that all day for my tight end. He can because he well, he has seventy two receptions last year, right? Something he, like that. Something like that. Mid seventies. Yeah. Which is not bad for a tight end. Um but just hopefully, you know, Stafford can stay healthy. Well it or, says it right there. That's last season mm-hmm. stats. He had seventy two. Oh, that's last 72. season stats, right? Yeah. Last season. Yeah. I didn't even pay attention. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. I mean, I tried it different this time when when heavy wide receiver. Yeah, you did. You went real heavy wide receiver, and especially like if you would have, if even if if you would have not fucked up the JT, the JT, you would have gotten your yeah. more wide receiver picks. So, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Deep, I've never seen you do that before, so it's kind of kind of cool to see you step out of your comfort zone. I want to see if it works. Well, out. you got you yeah, got Jonathan yeah. Taylor who's going to miss four weeks, or you could have taken mm-hmm. uh, Keenan Allen who's going to get hurt. Keenan yeah. Allen who's going to miss at least four weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. He does have. He does have. Uh, a point. Yeah. Like Tony said, I uh, before Mike and Tony go on, I, I'm a guy that usually gets those two early running backs, you know, and then come back with wide receiver. I'll go wide receiver running back um, to start, but you know, I, I want to step on my comfort zone and experience this and see see how it does for me. Switch it up a little. Right. Well, let's move to cool. Tony. Well, with that being said, hello, people. I am Harambe lives forever. Harambe, RIP. <laughs> But uh, my team is Harambe Lose Forever. And this year, I wanted to do something different. You know, last year, I didn't really make it in the Survivor League. Like Scott said, he won, sadly. (laughs) So I wanted to do something different. I I, I wanted to actually kind of go the normal super flex strategy, right? Draft a QB in first Yeah, yeah. Um, Which I don't really do. I don't believe in. Um, So I was like, let's do it, right? I was pick number five. I was the middle of the pack. Uh, well, that's that, that's as best you're gonna get here. So I ended up going Mahomes at five, and then everybody that went after, I was like, "Cool, Hertz is falling to me." What? He kept falling and falling. I was like, "Man, I couldn't pass up Hertz." And the reason I chose Hertz over pairing Mahomes with Kelsey was um, just because Hertz gives me the upside of having being a running back as well. And I'm a big running back guy, um, which you'll see in my next few picks because uh, yeah, I feel like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so I, that's why I chose Hertz over Kelsey, only is because he has more upside as playing the QB and then more of the running back kind of back, at, like uh, that mobile play aspect. And I mean, I got the QB1, QB2 of the entire like league. So I felt really good coming in from a super flex, super flex position. Um, the only thing that screws me is uh, my bye weeks, and we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, but then I went for my next two picks in Harry and uh, Henry. Harry. Henry and Jacobs. Um, the kill Harry. Yeah. <laughs> in, in, in Henry and Jacobs, I wanted to get those bell cows. Probably the only, one of the only two bell cows outside of McCaffrey uh, in the league. I mean, they're going to get pounded the entire year. Henry is going to beat everybody's O-line. That's the only running back. That's have. what I'm talking about, Tony. You, uh, you, you, you preach that into existence. Yeah, he's going. I mean, it happens every year. If, that, they, they, if it does not happen this year, I quit. I just I quit. Like I mean, regardless of him declining because he's older and he just doesn't have it. Like I mean, he even if he gets 85 percent of his old production, you know he's going to be going three hundred plus touches a game or through a season. And with Josh Jacobs, it's the same. He had that whole bullshit happen with the contract shit. They gave him the franchise tag money. I think what was it one million over two million or not franchise? Yeah, they franchise tagged him. Um, and and so I know they're going to run him straight up the line. They don't care about Josh mm-hmm. Jacobs. Fucking use him and abuse him. That's what they're going to do. And so I was like, let's take those guys. They're available. And then with with, with 
with Jameer Gibbs, I, that's why I want that PPR type of running back that a lot of people have been high on. He's been in camp. He's been looking great. And I'm excited for this game, Scotty. So on Thursday. So I'm, I'm excited to see what Gibbs does. I, and, and I think he could he's going to play 70 receptions for sure. Let's roll. I'm all for it. And that's why I had I had to take him there. Uh, and, and I'm glad I took him over uh, my boy, Ramon J. I'm sorry, to the moon still. <laughs> um, but I had to take Gibbs at that point. Well, R- Ramondre was already gone. Ramondre went the pick before him. Oh, okay. I'm reading this wrong. I don't remember the draft. I'm just reading off of this. I just assumed. Um, but I, I had I want running backs like I, I always do. I like running backs because um, they are they are thin too. Like once you lose those running backs, it's hard to pick them up off the waiver wire. And so you're really hoping for those teams that are going to get kicked out. I think last year, well, how many weeks was it until the first person got kicked out last year? Week five. I want to say week six. Five. Or four, yeah. And so, like, a lot can happen in, in weeks one to five, especially with some of these teams and the gauntlets they have in week one to five. Like, running back getting hurt, it's hard to pick up one off the waiver wire. It's it's thin. And there's a lot of depth in, in, in wide receiver. So I know that I didn't go, like, major wide receiver heavy, but I got some pretty good number one targets in Omari Cooper and Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen fell to me because Matt's an idiot um, and doesn't know <laughs> how to use a computer. You got so, lucky. Yeah, I got lucky. I'll, I'll put it that way. I don't care. I, I he's on my team, Matt. If you look at your team, he's not there. You you got to go public. Um, but I took Cooper and Allen. They're they're the number one targets there. Cooper, I mean, he's not he's not what he used to be. He's not what he was on Dallas. Uh, but he's better than what he was on the Raiders. <laughs> so man, his 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 quarterback is going to be the question mark for him. Yes, yes. And if if anything, ha- if anything, I mean, we know that Watson is not. He's not bad. like he's not awful, but if he, even if he's average, everything will go to Cooper. Cooper can make it happen. So I'm I'm cool there. And Keenan Allen, it's just a matter of when he get hurt. When he gets hurt, so it's why I kind of picked up more running backs in the back end um, to try to uh, fill out that Keenan Allen injury bug whenever he gets it. Uh, then I then I decided to go with George Kittle. That was best available. Um, I I I'll tell you this much. I was hesitant to go with George Kittle there because there were. Uh, there were a few other tight ends available, and I I could have skipped it entirely. It was either skip it or get George Kittle and wait till later, like Matt did the very last pick. Um, but George Kittle, I just hope he doesn't like pound the ball like you guys were talking about when we did the when we did the NFC uh, um, the NFC West. I I hope he doesn't get hurt, man, because he's he's getting older and and he just like you guys said, he just plays yeah. smash ball football. He's hurt right now. I'm worried about. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, hurt. he's hurt right now, but when Purdy they get down to the red zone, Purdy That's looks for him in the red zone. That's who he goes yeah. to. So I'm hoping he doesn't get hurt where he's out a couple of weeks. Um, but I, I mean, he, he he's a good, he's a great tight end, and so I was like, oh, yeah. right, I have to take him. Um, and then I took my boy Miles Sanders here. Um, I've always been high on Miles Sanders, uh, and especially after what he did in Philly. So he's going to Carolina. Where he's he's familiar with the OC, he's he's got a he's got a above above average offensive line, and I think that they're going to utilize him more than we think. Um, so I think Sanders is going to I think the OC is comfortable with Sanders, and so if Bryce Young doesn't really pan out, then I have uh, th- then I think they'll lean on Sanders more than 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 we like to think. I, I I hope they do that. I hope Bryce Young doesn't pan out, but whatever it is, what it is, uh, well, and so. Then I took Tyler Lockett, and I kind of went best available with Tyler Lockett because I wasn't looking too deep at that point. I remember looking at it. I was like, oh, I don't got time. I was doing something else on the side, and I picked Tyler Lockett. Uh, and then I reached for Michael Thomas here. I was like, he felt pretty late. I hope Michael Thomas, I know he's not what he used to be with Derek Carr there especially, but Derek Carr can't get the ball deep. Um, whether As much shit as I like to talk on Derek Carr, Michael Thomas can get down there with Chris Olave, both of them out there, I think Michael Thomas can make magic happen still. Um, look at Devontae Adams when Carr played his shittiest season last year. Devontae Adams still had, was it, 1,600 yards receiving? Uh, that's that's insane. So His um, his depth per target was like 18, 19 yards per catch in, yeah. in Vegas. Yeah, ridiculous. So, in Green Bay, it was like 13, something like that, 14. Yeah, ridiculous. So Carr can make it happen, and I think Thomas is going to be able to do that with him. Um, and then I got Courtland Court Sutton. I picked Sutton here only because I know Judy's hurt. I think they're going to bring him back too early. That's my position. Um, I know after reading his injury, 
they normally keep him out a couple of weeks, and they didn't they didn't put him on the uh, it wasn't the pup, right? Who were they gonna put him on? No. The, the, no, he's, or IR. Yeah, he's not even not, he's not an IR pup. No, they were gonna put him on some list. I forgot what the list acronym was, um, but they didn't. And so now, like, oh, he can play week one. But I'm like, man, you guys are gonna hold him out one or two weeks, and they put him week three. You're gonna play him too early. And he's gonna re-injure his hamstring again. So I was like, Courtney Hutton's gonna be the number one. Uh, and then I saw Adam Thielen here. I went Adam Thielen because he's the number one. He's OG there. Him and Bryce Young are already having a rapport. Um, but but Adam Thielen's a backup wide receiver, so I don't plan on starting him and Al Sanders at any point altogether. Uh, and then Dalton Kincaid. When I saw Dalton Kincaid available here, I had to snatch him up only because I've been a big fan of Dalton Kincaid, and I I really want him to be that number two in Buffalo, like we talked about. Uh, I think I think Kincaid can can be used outside uh, as in, as a slot, as a mini slot receiver. I think they'll use two tight end sets, but Knox is going to play that traditional tight end role and Kincaid's gonna be more of a slot receiver. Uh, I hope that happens, but we'll find out because um, there's no one else on that Buffalo offense besides Diggs. And then Zach Chabernet, Charbonnet, if you, uh, on Seattle. I, 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 I reached here a little bit um, trying to get the the second running back i know that uh it's walker right walker is gonna it's not walker it's walker right i forgot Kenneth walker. Yeah. yeah walker um uh, i know walker is not with not going to i don't feel like he's gonna be amazing i feel like they use a lot of running back by committee so i think zach is going to outplay walker by the end of the season and, uh, and I think that having him as a backup is just going to help my depth at running back. Um, but then I hear Jacoby Myers. I took Myers over um, Hunter Renfro only because I think Myers is – he's a he's, – I think he's he's a be, he's better in the slot uh, than Renfro, and he has a lot more experience than Renfro. Renfro has one great year where he posts, like, I'm an amazing slot receiver, but then he was hurt the next year. You, I just need Redford to be more consistent. And then I took my third QB in Bryce Young. If he pans out, he pans out. If he doesn't, I'll try to get somebody else up everywhere. So, so that's my team. Oh, I was just going to say, Tony, I'm, I'm going to say what everyone's probably thinking right now, and that your team fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm looking, Bryce Young, I can't believe you did that, dude. There had to be four, four, there. four fucking holes on this team to switch keys. I know you have no That's, wide receivers. And you know what? I I I, th- I know I have none, but there's a lot of depth at wide receiver. So as long as I can get by on wide receiver, uh, I'm cool. I'm cool. There is no depth at wide receiver. Patrick Mahomes is gonna throw for 25 touchdowns a game. Jalen Hurts is gonna throw for three touchdowns and rush three touchdowns a game. Uh, so I feel like I'm really hoping that my quarterbacks and my running backs pan out. But you know what? I I play the super flex position uh i think a little bit too hard and we'll see how far it gets me have, I'm, I'm bringing it up have you guys noticed in drafts this year out of all years wide receivers late are thinner than running backs yeah because yeah. it's the way you notice that yes that's why i'm pounding wide receiver because early. you don't yeah early. like you said earlier you don't have that elite running back anymore no so now you have they're all in the Most seventh, eighth the round. Running now. backs are all mo- all on the same level, uh-huh. and you have both the one A, one B that would be available yep. at middle rounds instead of having the one wide you know going thing. early and then having the backup yeah. going late. Wide receivers getting bumped up like four, three, four rounds. Running I'll backs are getting knocked down four rounds. If I lose, I lose, but I'm not going to go oh, first. Tony, you're, you're 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 late on the trend, Tony. Yeah, Tony. Uh, this is the way I would break down your team. This is just me personally. Number one, you definitely didn't pay attention to bye weeks. Holy shit! I did not. I'm fucked by weeks. So Dude, uh, I haven't seen his bye weeks. Pull up your team. It's, Doesn't it show it, the bye weeks? It, it's Dude. bad. It's bad. No, it like, does not show. Oh yeah, bye. Five. Ten. Oh my god, five, <laughs> five, five, five. Oh my Seven. wide receiver! So, <laughs> oh, dude, week five, oh you, have a, you have a check mark. Week five, you better hope somebody's on the mid. I'm hoping CP loses. Okay, look, oh, let's just sound the way I see it, and I want to know if anyone agrees with me. Michael Thomas, if I haven't he put him in down, He has a chance to go down, dude. The guy goes down all the fucking time. Yeah, he did. Wait, he goes Michael down Thomas starting week five. This is no, I haven't done my lineup. I haven't done my lineup, dude. Oh. If he does. Here's your three starting wide receivers week five. Corton Sutton, Adam Thielen, Jacoby Myers. That's who you will actually have to start. 
And no. you better hope Kittle's healthy. You know what I'm going to do, though? Because, because otherwise, you don't have a second tight end. That's the thing. I, that's he, has the thing. he has Kincaid, Mike. Don Kincaid. Yeah, no, he won't have another receiver or tight end to put in the receiver tight end spot. For what? Kincaid, Mike. If Kittle's hurt week five and Michael Thomas is hurt. Yeah, I get what Mike's saying. Oh. Then he has to put Kincaid in the tight end spot. Who's he put in the receiver tight end spot? Fucking Adam. Oh. I don't know. Oh, never mind. I, I fucking pick one up off the waiver wire. I got you have four, rec- you have four receivers out. He has, he has 19 that- transactions. You think 19, <laughs> that's 19 transactions? You act like I like you get you act like 19. You know, use all hey, 19 before week five. You won't burn them all up. <laughs> burn no, them up. Here's the other problem. Everyone, ever since Josh Jacobs came back, Josh Jacobs has been flying off the fucking draft boards. Oh, he's gone I up. Think, yeah, I think it's a mistake. Look, what I, has I, I one, get you? What has one thing me. proven year in year out about players that mm-hmm. hold out this late? Into- you hold out, you miss training camp, you get hurt. Agreed. I get that. I get and if you that. don't get hurt, your production tanks. Well, I know Josh that. Jacobs, he needs a deal next year. He needs a deal. This is his year to prove it again. He's got he needs a deal next year. Otherwise, his career's over. Yeah, but and, and that and, that was my thought process in taking him in the fourth. And Derrick Henry last year, 70% of his production came off of five games. So we'll come off five more games. Don't you fucking throw it back and, to hey, and those five games year. will be after you're eliminated. I'm not Don't throwing it <laughs> yeah, Matt, you're all in on Derrick Henry in a couple um, leagues. One year. I need him for 16 games. Hey, he fucked me last year in a few leagues with his 16 for fucking 38. Yeah, I'm nervous week one. I'm like, what is it? Najee Harris? <laughs> Trent, Trent Richardson? <laughs> I just know that I'm not going to get it. Like, I, I, all I care about is not getting last for like a couple weeks. That's it. I just need to make it a couple weeks because my, my quarterbacks are going to carry me. No, oh, I get R. Jackson and Josh Allen last year, and your ass got fucking eliminated. Oh, yes. don't bring up Josh Allen. Wow, that was bullshit. Josh, Josh Allen, Allen is first in this league. Josh yeah. Allen got Mike and Tony. Yeah, oh, back to back. Didn't he get us back to back weeks? No, yeah, no, I picked him up on, no, I picked him up on his bye week, and then I used him the week after that, and I got eliminated. Got and eliminated. then go pick him up and play him be in the fucking hey. champion. Mike wet. used his entire fab to get Josh. Mike, let everybody know how much you bid at that point. We were down to like the last three weeks, last four how weeks. How much did you bid, though? You tell me. I don't remember. <laughs> it was $94. Nine. Huh? 89. 89? What yeah. you bid? It was 94. It was 90, I think. I don't it was remember. 94. Who gives a shit? I got eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> let's not talk about it, guys. Let's not talk about it. <laughs> All right, let's jump on to Mike's team. Enough of fucking... <laughs> Fucking last place, Tony. Uh, first of all, I'd like, to, I'd like to point out my name. Can't spell Matt without uh, ATM. Yeah. yeah I, for, those, for those people oh. who don't know what ATM means, spell it out. Ask the mouth. <laughs> the ATM at the bank. No, 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 no. Hey, money. We all Matt. know those dirty videos and pictures you send us. <laughs> my, Matt, um, I'm just going to say change your fucking name. Uh, you have survival champ. Okay. Oh, yeah. For sure. like, not fucking championship level <laughs> fantasy football, okay? You'll see this year. Yeah, well, you take fifth. That's the same thing we heard <laughs> last year. <laughs> oh, guys, I just drafted all wide receivers, and I'll pick up some um, running backs. I took fourth last year. Hey, I got starting running backs on my roster. Took, I don't know what you're talking about. You took fourth, I took third, Angel took second, and Scott took first, right? Say that again, Mike, but say it slow. I took fourth. Tony, what'd you take? I don't know, not last. Fifth? Not- <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, anyways, I had the number six overall pick. Um, I took Bijan right here. I don't have him in any leagues, and I figure the hell might as well see what it's all about. Um, second round, I took AJ Brown. I wanted to get, I, I tried to go more of a balance at the beginning um, to get a couple of elite position players, uh, knowing that I was planning on going quarterback, quarterback, third and fourth. And it, it lucked out for me um, with when I took Burrow there at, at 22. Uh, the quarterbacks that were left after him, I knew I was still going to be able to get at least an elite quarterback because the quarterbacks that were still there were Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert. Um, I'm sorry, before that. Josh Allen went before, Bur- before Burrow, then I took Burrow. You had Trevor Lawrence, Herbert, Dak, 
who gets a lot of people talk shit on Dak, but fantasy fantasy football wise, he gets you points. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, I was looking at it as far as who was there. I'm like, you know what? I, at least if I go quarterback, quarterback here, I know I'm going to get two quarterbacks that are going to put up points. So I went with Herbert, figured he had the best upside of the, all those ones that were there. Um, I needed another running back. I went with a starting running back with Damian Pierce. Um, another elite receiver, which I was surprised Metcalf was still there at that point. Um, so I, I feel I got two, you know, two solid receivers there with two quarterbacks. Um, Waller, I know you guys are super high on Waller. I, I think I he's just good. He's going to be a target monster there. Huge target uh-huh. monster in in in, in uh, New York. They don't really have anybody else to throw to. Um, Ayuk, the reports right now in camp, he's just dominant. Better than Debo. Yeah, and Debo actually went before him. So and I called that two years ago. <clears throat> called it. So I, I I figured I'm gonna I'm gonna go uh, go Ayuk there. Um, taking another running back, Dobbins. I know a lot of people are are scared on him uh, just because of his injury. You know, in history and everything there. And the offseason, what happened? Yeah. Um, If he works out, though, I mean, I I think that's a great pick. That's a solid, you know, solid running back there at that point. Um, Judy, I also gambled on. He might miss the first week or two, but we'll see. I am excited for what Sean Payton's going to do, though, with that offense. So I I think Judy can can really contribute there. Um, Again, trying to stick with the, you know, with the balance there. Going with Rashad White, uh, Christian Watson, Nico Collins in Houston. They got to throw the ball to somebody. Um, Raheem, Raheem Mostert, more of possibly a first few week rental. Um, he's not going to be. I don't envision him being a, a late, you know, late season guy on my team still, um, because Jeff Wilson's out for the first four weeks, right? Uh, mm-hmm. He's on IR. Then he's, yeah, he's on, on pups and he's on. And- he's on pup. So. Is he yeah. really? I thought he was on yeah. IR. They, they put him on the pup list. So he, he's out the first four weeks. Yeah. So um, most are, by default right there is going to be the number one. Yeah. Um, a chain's ba- uh, banged up too. Most are yeah. just straight up like almost Dude, like every down back. Every yeah. back the first first. Week. I don't know. Miami better hope that most stays healthy. Yeah. Yeah. That's the guy that. that that's the thing. It's it, Miami has running backs that uh, have – Injury history. Um, Quentin Johnson, I drafted him, figuring he at some point is probably going to be the number two because one of the running back or quarter, one of the receivers, either Keenan Allen or Mike Williams, would go down with injury. But then, what was it? The next day or two days after we did this draft, uh, the report came out that Josh Palmer is the number three. So Quentin Johnson is going to open up the season as the number four. Otherwise, I wouldn't have drafted him right there. He he does need a little bit of work as far as his hands go, mm-hmm. but I, I I could see later on in the year him uh, him becoming the number three over Josh Palmer. But at at that point, there'll be other receivers out there to pick up. Yeah, no, well, no I, yeah. Well, he's going to be forced into the limelight because Keenan Allen, yeah. and Mike, Tom, Mike, uh, Mike, uh, what's his name? We're going to get hurt. So they could get yeah. hurt. Fucking Week one. They're always. But I, I, I took him kind of more as a, more of a handcuff there, you know, with the gamble to to be able to get some upside. Um, Sam Hell needed another uh, another running. I took back him because Matt liked him. No, bullshit. Um, you are not Sam Hell. <laughs> <laughs> you have not been fucking saying. Yeah, and then uh, the Muth with my last pick needing a that's a steal a, a backup tight end. I can't believe he fell that far. And and you know what, Mike, the Fairmuth is a is a good pick because That's I would phenomenal. be a little bit, I, I'd be a little bit nervous about Waller staying healthy. He he could end up missing a game oh, or two. He's oh, getting oh. up. He has been oh. missing games here and there the last couple of years. I'm um, I'm convinced that injury was contract related, hundred percent. You think so? Uh, he didn't. He didn't want to be there. He did not want to be there. They did not want to pay him, and he had a falling out with Josh McDaniels, hundred percent. Which I every, think every player in the fucking. Raiders I think it was contract related. I don't. I did not think he may have gotten hurt originally, but there's no way he was out. What? How many weeks did he miss last year? Twelve. Yeah. There's no way that you no. No. 
I think it was more contract related than anything, but anyways, I we'll agree. see. So my we'll see if you say looking at your starting lineup, um just my my personal opinion, I would probably actually run with Moser over Damian Pierce week one. Yeah, I haven't I haven't really done it. Really? Um I, I haven't done my lineup. I was either that or or over Dobbins. Yeah, Matt, think about it. Oh, that's at Baltimore. I didn't see. I didn't see who was playing. Yeah, my Miami. Well, is, is playing at at uh, the Chargers. Yeah, L A and, and Miami is going to be a good game. It's going to be competitive all the way through to the end. There's no yeah. blowout there. Let's be real. That Houston Baltimore game is probably not going to be close. I wouldn't be surprised if by the fourth quarter Baltimore starters are not in the game anymore. Um, yeah. I, I or, like or at, or at least J K Dobbins to. To give him rest and not try to risk an injury, re aggravate an injury. No, look at this point, J.K. Dobbins. It, it's I think time to be fine. Himself. I think I think Baltimore needs to see if he can stay healthy Let or him not. Lose. Yeah, I mean, when he's healthy, he's running the ball over five yards. Oh, like it's like six point two yards a carry last year. Those yeah. um couple weeks he was playing. Yeah, the talent's there. The talent's there all day. I think yeah. he's. He just gets hurt. I mean, how, how long? Mike, he need, Mike needs him the whole season, though. He doesn't need him for a few games. Let's no, be fair. I, he was he's only been hurt one year of his career, which was last year. He tore his tore his knee up. Before yeah, that, he, he was healthy his whole rookie season. He was healthy the whole rookie season. Oh, what do you do? This is barely his third year. You know that, right? Don't I know it's his third. So I'm trying to say you're talking about him like he's like super elite, and he's only done he is. average. When he's on the field, look at his numbers when he's healthy. And his rookie I mean, year, I, he was. He was behind uh, Mark Ingram there. So I, I think the overall I have years. a fairly solid team, but I can see some question marks on at the running back position. Yeah, I feel like um, that's your biggest weakness, Mike, is your I, running back. I got more questions on your wide receivers and running backs. Yeah, I, I actually like I like the your wide running backs are good. Yeah, I, I think you're I think you're great. Um I will I say like your, I don't like your bench very much when it comes but, to wide Every uh, but every we were talking about that everybody's bench is pretty even. If you say so. I apparently you didn't look at Tilly's bench. <laughs> this whole team is a bench. <laughs> this whole team is bench. Give me the, give me yeah, that I, I I think Mike's um the only thing I don't like about Mike's team is wide receiver. I, I, I like your three starting receivers. I come down to your flex. Christian Watson, I'm not a fan of. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could prove me wrong. If we'll Jerry see. Judy pans out, it's better. And if Jerry Judy's healthy, which yeah, I don't think he Jerry will be, like Judy, Mike said, Jerry Judy would go there. If he misses a few weeks, then you're out of Jerry Judy for a few weeks. Now you're looking at if injury happens, you're looking at Nico Collins or Quinn Johnson to help you out without yeah. picking up a waiver wire. So yeah, so you're just a little thin there. The great thing about this league is that they're you know you don't have to worry about the guy next to you. You just got to make sure you're not the yourself. Worst that, that yep. week. And I don't yeah. look at Mike's team. I don't see this team. Being that team that could finish last at the beginning of the season, um, so who, uh, who do you, who do you think could finish last at the beginning of the season? <laughs> okay, uh, so, don't you know. <laughs> I think yeah. Tom, sorry, I think you got a bottom three team. I don't know um, if I had less. Not what the question was, Scott. <laughs> the question <I> was <laughs> because I'm I'm nominating you for one of the guys that could end up doing. Um, I'm not go, go ahead and. If, and up uh, CP's team. <laughs> yeah, I, I. Sorry, CP. We love you, but I think the consensus on us. No, is, I don't fucking love you. Mike speaks for it's, himself. It's Iggy and CP right now for me. Dodgers based off projections, just based hey, off team this build. One's CP right? OG Raider. I'm looking yeah. at yeah. I'm looking at. Not looking at CP's. I'm looking at uh, Iggy's right now. We'll look at it. You want okay? Which one? Oh, Iggy. Iggy, Iggy, Iggy could be go, screwed. I don't yeah, even think it's go CP. Go to okay. Cole Former. CPs is yeah, it's it's there, but look at Cooper Cup, Najee Harris, ugh, Dalvin Cook no. at Buffalo, or hey, look no. at Week Seven. His no, second no, quarterback no, no, is no, no, Anthony no, no, Richardson. No, 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 he, he's in trouble at the quarterback position. That the quarterback position is going to be Iggy's downfall. Yep. Um, and his Jordan wide Love and Anthony Richardson are his two quarter, or his second quarterback. <sighs> Shit. Oh, and his running backs. The whole fucking team is his problem. Like. Dalvin Cook, they already McLaurin with Brees Hall is the number one. They, they already came out and said that like, Brees Hall is mm, going to. I be, told you guys have the opportunity. Hey, still. you guys want to say I Cooper told Cup? You, look at his week seven. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, but you're going to be eliminated by week five, and he'll be able to guys. You guys both will. 
He has mm-hmm. Najee Harris. I don't think against Frisco. That's not a good. <laughs> that's not good. Dalvin Cook. I understand it's home, but that's against Buffalo. Great front seven. Kyle Pitts is Kyle Pitts. Hopefully, he can prove himself again. Michael hey. Pittman. Do not well, like Michael. But look at Cooper. Okay, he's, take Cooper Cup out of that starting let's receiver. Be fair here. Let's be fair to Iggy here. Oh, he's God. already said he's going to warm up the couch. He said it in the text message. He's he did. Like, I lost week one. He knows. You yeah. take out. Hey, but you oh, know this God. league. You know this league. This league is we. Oh, my God. The group chat. We can't even talk Somebody's about it. Somebody's going to get roasted week one. <laughs> it's going to be open fire on somebody's ass. Not yeah, yeah. If we could, if we could put the group messages in here, oh my god, we'd all lose our jobs. We'd all be canceled. <laughs> look, but what I will say about this, so this is something that you need to look at too in this league. That means let's just say Iggy is is the first one eliminated. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're going to have Jamar Chase available, CD Ooh, Lamb available. Oh, CD oh. Lamb. Hey, how much is the fab? 100. 100. 100. Yeah, last 100. year was 125. 100. And, hey, and for fantasy purposes, you're going to have Prescott available. Yeah. But no one's going to need a starting wide receiver. No, 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 no quarterback. I'm putting everything on Cooper Cup. Uh, um, Brees Hall is going to be, I think Brees Hall is going to be a second half. half. Beat. If you but I wouldn't pick him. Uh, if you can save him on your bench, yeah. Yeah, dude. Especially in this league where he's going to really matter down. Ah, dude, this is going to be awesome. Well, look, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think we're all in agreement. Iggy's might lose week one. Like, he, of, of everybody's team, yeah. he might Let's lose Let's go to CP. One. I want to see CP. Well, yeah. Week one and two. I was going to pull that up, Scott. I oh, you're going to go week, week two. two. You, have da- you have Dak against the Jets. Oh. You have Jamar Chase against <laughs> Baltimore. Baltimore. Cooper Cup against, against San, Francisco, San Francisco, if he plays. Oh. Najee Harris against Cleveland. Dalvin Cook is saying he has a lamb against the Jets. Oh, oh but James bad. Cook's about to run for a thousand yards. That'll save him. That's, I don't that think that's going to save him. him. I did not. You know, Buffalo does not run the ball that much. They ran the ball the least amount of times. Like, I want to say they ran it like Richardson 15 might times. Save him. He's playing Houston. No, but they might have a better uh, defense with their new coach. So whew, Iggy I can get tough. one, two back to back. One, two. Man. Oh, but let's okay for for the sake of fairness, Iggy. We're sorry. We love you, brother. Let's go. Let's go. Let's yeah. We're bashing Iggy you right now. I want to see. Fuck Iggy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is CP's week one. He's yeah. got Trevor Lawrence. And he's good. Well, Wilson against Buffalo. Oh shit. Gabe Davis against the Jets. Gabe Davis was your sleeper who didn't wake up last oh, year. Oh, I like Johan Dotson. That wasn't my sleeper, was it? That was CP sleeper. No, it's not Johan. Gabe Davis was your sleeper last year, Matt. After no, he went I, off in the playoffs and he didn't I don't remember do even it. drafting that guy yeah. last year. I would actually honestly I like Nick I would, Chubb. I would start Nick Chubb again since he's good. I would Follow start George Pickens over over Gabe Davis all day. Like I all would too. I would too. Day. All day. Herbert. I would uh Herbert. I would start Herbert over fucking James Conner. I would. I don't think Arizona can stay in that game for James Conner to get enough relevant touches. And Washington already has a pretty good defense as it is. It's going to be hard for him to get. Mm-hmm. I just have a question. He took Hey, Pollard let's not throw and... suggestions out there. Why are we suggesting shit? <laughs> hey. <laughs> the hope they don't well, listen to the podcast. <laughs> Pollard, Pollard and Deuce Vaughn on the same team? Uh, well, I guess he I, backed I, I, the purpose. I, 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 but neither one of them is going to be a three down back. CP's cocky. He drafted Jameson, and he drafted a backup. Yeah, I, that's I was cocky. The Jameson Williams in this in this league is a he shouldn't even be rostered here <laughs> in this league. Yeah, that's he's not what six, he out, what's he out? Is he out six weeks? Hey, CP, he, if you're hearing this, you need to text the group chat right now and tell us why. He essentially only has four bench <laughs> players. Yeah, I don't even count Deuce Vaughn. I don't count Deuce Vaughn. I don't count. Oh, five bench players. My bad. Pickens, Daniels. No. Yeah. I I don't even think he doesn't matter. He has four bench players because Daniels. Oh, he can't start. Yeah. Can't start three quarterbacks. Yeah. Ooh, man. CP, CP, hey, you got big balls, homie. I like it. I hope it works out for you. Go to week two (laughs) for him. Big balls and fucking gave himself herpes with this team, dude. It doesn't matter. (laughs) Oh, T Law Kansas City week two. Trevor Lawrence against Kansas City, though. Well, oh, that's gonna that's gonna be good. Is that week two? Yeah. 
But uh, I mean, Gabe Davis oh, against shit. Vegas, that's going to help a lot. Dotson and Denver. Oh, man. That's going to be tough. Wilson against Dallas is going to be tough. Chubb in Pittsburgh's tough. Yeah. I mean, Pollard against the Jets. Jets. That's going to be tough. Oh, Pollard's going to get his ass in the life for the first yeah. time, huh? That front seven's going to. Jordan Addison. That's going to be both. Dude, that, I, I like both the Jets. Well, hey, can... fun football to watch. Mm-hmm. I like the Jets playing against Buffalo and Dallas back to back at the beginning of the year. Can, mm-hmm. can two people can two people get kicked out in the first two weeks? It? No, dude. How did, if, if they, they both if they lose? Die, they oh no, they can't. My bad. They both. Yeah, it's the die. least amount of points. Yeah. My, Matt, oh. you're the commissioner. Just correct their points so they both. I don't have a tiebreak in place. What if they tied? They both lose. Not, that's a they great. Both they both get a check mark, right? They yeah, both check mark. Like, all took last place. That's that's something yeah. we should have to talk about. I don't think it's going to happen because we have fractional points, but it can happen though. It's happening. It, it can happen. Um, okay, you, okay. You heard it here first. You guys both get check marks if it's your first one. Yep. End yeah. of tide. So this is. What do you do if it's? Time. What if you do if it's somebody's potential second? <sighs> You're fine, Mike. Mike, it doesn't matter. The rules are the rules. Yeah. No, you know, I would. Matt just Matt just said if it's if, if it's your first check mark, you both get you it. Both get it. But what if, if it's, it's somebody's first? Then would be somebody's second. Did you I guess they both – no, they both get eliminated, and I think the next week nobody gets eliminated so we can roll over, right? That would be no, the... you can't fucking roll it over. It's set up. Someone has to get eliminated. Someone has to get eliminated. I would right? say you eliminate both, right? They're both yeah. I would No. I would say the tiebreaker would be who has the least amount of points for the season. There's no tiebreaker. They're fucking tied. They both have <laughs> ass scores. Get the fuck out of here. I agree with Scott. <laughs> So if they got eliminated, then the season be over a week earlier. Then yeah, yeah, that's all it would be. That sucks. But be real. I mean, the chances of that happening are yeah, a fucking better chance of getting laid than freaking that happening. <laughs> Let's look. Oh, we're no, we're. I, I think we're all confident. In none of us, even though my team is. I, I oh, shit. Just barring, play. just barring injuries. I mean, that's, well, you got. I mean, look at you got. Too. Look at the gap between. CP and Iggy's team versus everybody else's team. What yeah, everybody's one seven. One, one, point, yeah. point, one point? Less than a point? Yeah. Well, no, but look at everybody. Everybody else is at like – everybody else is basically 170. Yeah, basically. I'm predicted to score the most point. Oh, Matt is – I'm predicted to score – oh, the most. <laughs> I don't know how Tony's predicted for the most. That doesn't make yes. any sense. I'm a quarterback. So sometimes. What, hey, what about uh, Lightning McRug's team? Quarterback. Until Jalen Hurts uh, shits on you in New England. Hey, hey, you fucking take that back. You take that back <laughs> right now. I'll take it back because I like Derek. Hey, what about McRug's, McRug's team or uh, or Angel's team? I like I like Andrew's team. I don't think it's I don't think it's bad. I haven't looked at uh how much McRug's. Are we looking at McRug's? Yeah, it's just the, it's just Josh Allen against the Jets. That's going to be kind of and Devontae in Denver. Well, look at this. It's not even that. I'm I know that the the, the computer said he had the best draft of everybody. And he's going to win, right? But Devontae really? Adams, yeah, Devontae Adams. I I wouldn't have taken him there like he did. I'm going to say his lineup's not done. Well, even then, he's going to start Devontae Adams. I, I'm. I'm gonna say his lineup. I'm not. I'm not even looking at Devonte Adams. Well, I know. You're gonna put Javante? You start Javante week one. I don't I over do Juju. Not. I don't. You start oh, him over man. Juju. I would start him over Juju. I would start him over Juju. That's that's what I was talking about. That's why I said I don't think his I don't think his his lineup's done. Is his touch is limited though? In week but it one. doesn't matter if it's limited. The Juju against Philly's defense is dominant. Yeah, Ramondi Stevenson. What do you think he's gonna do against Philadelphia? Uh, I, I don't know. know. It is what it is. His uh, his second quarterback though, Deshaun Watson, forever. is going to be a question mark. All right, guys, I'm going to stop screen sharing. We're going to talk about this yeah. terrible game. An hour and twenty minutes. Yep. Yeah. Talking about how shitty your guys' teams are, Mike. That's but it. The quarterbacks going to carry me. Okay. How about no. you get your uh, team name off the off the screen? I'm going to win. That's why I'm leaving it up, Mike. <laughs> So that's the league that we're going to mainly talk about this year. Uh, we're going to be going over that. Um, we also have a couple other leagues we're probably going to dive into. We'll probably dive into our Dynasty League um, at some point. Um, but this isn't going to be your every – like this This fantasy podcast is not going to be the same as all the other ones. We're not going to go out there and tell you, 
oh, pick up this guy off of waivers, pick off, you know, this guy, blah, 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 blah. Because let's be real, everyone already, are, there's like 50,000 other podcasts that are going to talk about that. We want to break down our league. We want to show you if your team looks like this, if you are lacking in this, who can you look at picking up? What can you do to improve your roster? That's the type of stuff that we want to go over. So um, if that's what you – if you want to kind of join us in this year and see how this league goes, you know, go ahead and give us a uh, – you know, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, follow us. We're going to be doing this every week. We also have a sports podcast. We have a wrestling podcast. We have a now a sports betting podcast. We have a weekly pick uh that we do as well. So uh, Jim and 10 Sports is going to be very busy here coming up. There's going to be new content almost daily. Um, so if that's something you need to, you know, if you're bored at work, want to pop some stuff on, drop on by. We're going to have new videos almost every day. So uh, you guys got anything? Right, else some, Graham, some, some of the podcasts may have uh, not safe for work language. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> Fuck it. Uh, no, I just want to add uh, up. Mike. I just want to add that we have a dynasty league we all in. So if you guys are into that dynasty stuff, we might come on here and talk a little bit about some dynasty football. And, you know, that's a little bit more different as far as age and, and picking up and all that stuff, you know. Yeah, it's a different strategy hey, for sure. Hey, Tony, what did I just say about fucking 30 seconds before this? He didn't say anything about the dynasty, did he? He said we're talking about a few other leagues. In no, you got to throw a dynasty. You gotta, if there's I, dynasty people out there, you got to let them know about it. Maybe you should stop daydreaming about fucking. <laughs> And pay attention <laughs> or trade raping people. Oh, yeah. No, hey, hey, um, can we do a trade a, a oh, trade hey, segment wait, with CP? Wait, wait. <laughs> Let's talk CP? about the trade before we get going. Trade Mike. Rate. Mike is a of the, son of of the century. Mike, Mike, Dude. okay. All right, Mike talks the most shit on fucking Matt and CP. And they're not even that bad. Our trade, Mike, Mike has the two first. <laughs> Lopsided trades I've ever fucking seen. He just traded Josh Jacobs to the bottom feeder team in our dynasty league for two fucking first round picks. What? Is it just, <laughs> we're just there at the screen and let Mike. <laughs> Tony, elaborate. did you not? Tony, did you not see that? This happened last week. Tony, bro, I traded. I, I, I was traded all of last week, guys. Oh. I saw a hundred million messages. No. Okay, you so, need to go look when we roast the draft, too. I, Tony, I traded Josh Jacobs and a fourth rounder next year and a third rounder the year after for a first rounder next year and a first rounder the year after. To who had him? I don't remember who had him. I had Josh Jacobs. I traded him to Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you didn't. Yes, I did. Oh, Tony, man. Tony, that's why you oh, had yeah. so many messages on your phone. Me and Matt roasted Aaron for an hour straight. Go back and look at the memes. For an hour straight, we fucking. What do you say? This is why he Nothing. always takes the best place. Now, oh. the other fucking rape that Mike did, not this year, but that, well, how many years ago was like Dude, I don't know. It was a few was years five, ago. No, with... It was with DeMarco Murray, so it was like five, six years ago, give or yeah. take. Right? And now, this is not DeMarco Murray of his prime. This is oh, DeMarco yeah. Murray the year before he was fucking done playing football. Mike got a <laughs> In top Tennessee. Top Jesus Christ, dude. Well, oh, hey, did you see the, the trade I just did with Matt? No, oh, I didn't know. You didn't see that? Tell him, Matt. Tell him what you gave me. For Antonio I, who I give you, I give you everybody. Oh yeah, I paid up for that. He gave me a first round pick for Antonio Gibson. But I got a second in return, so I'll take it. Yeah, you are it. fucking stupid, dude. But you gotta remember my picks late next year. I don't I don't really need the first round. It is what it is. Yeah, I mean, I'm, need I'm the one that's protected to go 13 and 1. Fool. I need a running back help, so and I got two first rounds next year. And I can afford to do it if you guys see okay, my team. I found, so. what that, I found what that trade was for DeMarco Murray. Um, Do you still have court? it? This is no, my. I, I looked. My I went, I went back to my messages. I just searched it. So <laughs> I traded away Demarco Murray and Taylor Gabriel, who was a player <clears throat> I wasn't even going to keep, and my fourth rounder for Mark Ingram and a first rounder. Oh. And Mark Ingram by the time was pretty good. All right, fuck wow. this. Let's go now. Four hour. Like... 
We'll see you later. Tony, yeah. go back and look at the look at the fantasy draft. Look yeah, at the look back. at it. Go back and look at the threads. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. You, it's it's gonna take you a while to read all those messages and you, do oh, it. Good I promise. Scott, Scott went ham. <laughs> it was good. It was I wouldn't win him. I would. I would have said veto. I would have said I. I quit. That's a Josh trade right there. Hey, but yeah, CP said I don't want to hear a fucking word anymore about when I asked for two first for Derrick Henry. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry. But okay, I think we're good. Yeah. Hour and a half. I, I doubt anyone's even watching this anymore. They probably are like, dude, these guys are fucking. Nuts, but these guys all suck at fantasy yeah. football. So, anyways, uh, yeah. Th- Talk through the whole thing. We appreciate it. If you're in our leagues and we talk shit about you, uh, continue to come back because we're going to continue to do it every week. (laughs) And with that said, I hope everyone has a good night, and we will see you next week on the next episode.